Welcome back, programmers! Today I'm back on the snake game. Yes, last time we had a white square that couldn't move, so today I'm going to make it longer to make it move and also change the background a little bit so it looks better. Let's get to it. Okay, we are back in the code. Let's do that. Uh, look at this code here in uh, comment. Um, since last time I bought a new screen, uh, actually it's a Christmas gift, yes. A new screen, so a new resolution and new setup. So I have my laptop screen plus another uh, Quad HD screen. And so now I have two desktops. So just a quick thing here. If I remove those comments here, you'll see what I did is I, um, I'm iterating, I'm, I'm, I'm displaying the number of des desktops and I'm iterating through them to get the uh, resolution and the, their size. And actually to be able to display nice uh, font and for you to see the whole uh, source code, I changed the uh, parameters in my windows and I zoom to, uh, you know, the DPI, I zoom it to 200%. So I will need to do some adjustment to the snake so that it displays correctly on the monitor. So let's run this. So what did I do? Debug number of desktop. So I'm putting in a variable the return value of the examine desktops. I display that in the debug window and then I iterate through uh, the desktop, so 0 and 1 because I have two, and display the number of the desktop. Also, it's width and height and resolution X, resolution Y, so the DPI basically. And the DPI is the same for the whole Windows. Let's run this. Boom, voila. See, number of desktops two, desktop zero, so the first one, it's my Quad HD monitor uh, 2560 by 1440, and it's two by two, so the ratio is two, see, it's 200%. And desktop one, it's my laptop screen, and it's uh, full HD 1920 by 1080, and it's the same zoomed, uh, the DPI is the same for the whole uh, OS. So that's it, see? So what I need to do is adapt the code here. That's what I already did. So this, the only difference compared to last time is that I, I'm dividing here, okay, by the desktop to resolution X and Y. When I'm resizing the window, I will put that back, I will even remove that from the code. Okay, we don't need those debug information here. And if I run it, it looks exactly the same as it used to look at the end of last episode. Escape works. Okay, so uh, first things first, I need to do a little bit of a refactoring and I will do that. Okay, so quick refactoring. Uh, the event variable was defined within the inner loop. So it's not a good practice to define a variable in a loop because you're defining it over and over and over. So th the best practice is to define it outside of loops. So you are defining it once and using it uh, in the loop. So that's what I did and I, also, I also like uh, the other projects. I also put every code in the main procedure and calling the main procedure. That's one. Next, I will make the snake not one point anymore, X and Y, but an array of points. And by the way, I will use the point structure uh, that is in PureBasic 
which already contains a X and Y members. Let's do this. Okay, I have my snake that is an array of three cells. Yes, the two here, remember, it's the highest index of the array. So one, uh, zero, one, two, so three cells. First cell, the, uh, the head, that I, the head, the body and the tail, I would say. And a, uh, the head was the same coordinate as before. And then I, I have added a body and a tail. It's gonna be horizontal. Okay, now we need to display the snake. Instead of displaying only one sprite, now I will iterate through all the cells of the snake and display each one. Let's go. Okay, that should be it. Uh, so just I'm flipping buffer and this if the screen is active I'm clearing the screen with the dark blue and then I'm iterating here for snake cell equals zero so I've defined snake cell here by the way someone told me that it's better to put protected for variables within a function so that's our case here. For snake cell equals zero to array size of snake. So array size returns the array size. So here it, ret it will return uh, two. Zero to two. Display sprite snake cell, snake of a snake cell. So I'm displaying the sprite snake at the coordinates that I have in each cell of my snake and that should display the whole snake on the screen let's try that boom that does not do that at all and you know why i do know why because i haven't called the init function see i have created a procedure init snake that initiates initializes all the uh, cells of my snake but I forgot to call this, I will call it here, init snake. And now we can try. Boom, that doesn't work because I am, you have noticed that already, haven't you? I'm sure you have. There is no three cell because I say one, two, three, I don't know. It incremented in my head automatically. And boom, <laughs> the last boom is the, the right one. Uh, here we have our snake and look, one, two, three, you can see almost three squares, the head and the tail. And okay, we are able to display a very nice snake. Well, three, uh, I would say three unit long, but now let's make it move. All right. So to make it move, what we need to do is to have a direction because we need to know in which direction it moves. So it will look like a vector. So yes, it's a little bit advanced. If you are young and you don't know what the vector is, it's simply said it will give me the uh, speed of the snake on the X axis. So does it move and at which speed does it move horizontally? and it will also give me the speed of the snake vertically. Um, so I will just have to add the speed uh, to the position of my snake and it will uh, automatically compute the uh, next position of every cell. So each time we go in the loop, before displaying the snake, I will compute the new position based on the speed, okay? Let's do that. Okay. 
Okay, so here you'll see I created a point. So that can seem weird to have a point to define the speed, but I need a horizontal speed and a vertical speed, so x and y, and a point as an x and a y, so it's a good structure to use to define speed, 2D speed. In the init snake, I'm also initializing the speed. X will be square size. Every step, every loop, it will move to the next square uh, because I want my snake always to move in the squares, to be really even compared to the grid and not move one pixel by one pixel, but square size pixels by square size pixels. And speed uh, y is zero. Uh, yes, I will not move. If, if I say speed speed y is a square size, it will move diagonally because it will have a horizontal speed as well as a vertical speed, so it will move in diagonal. I don't want that. I just want it to move from left to right first and after we'll change, I will manage the uh, arrow, arrow keys to make it turn and you'll see turning the snake is just changing the uh, speed vector, the speed point. So I have my speed here initialized and then in my main loop I clear my screen, I move the snake. So to move the snake, I'm just iterating through the snake, okay, cells, and adding the speed to the X of each cell and to the Y of each cell. Let's try that, shall we? Boom, oh, see that? That's a fast snake, let's try again. Wow, <laughs> that's a very fast snake. So one way to make it slower, and we are gonna make it slower, but we could do something like, okay, delay, and that's not good. Uh, let's say I'm gonna delay 50 milliseconds uh, between each step. And now it's a little bit slower, okay? So I could use maybe 100 milliseconds and run it again, what do I get? I get a pretty okay snake, but you see, very uh, it's not very good because you're here just waiting. So the display is not uh, updating as well. It's just waiting 100 milliseconds between each loop. So between each uh, buffer flip. So not even between each frame, it's just waiting here. Uh, we're going to keep that and um, I'm actually going to use another mechanism to make it move at the same speed but not using this delay. I will uh, write this and I will explain to you right after. Let's go. <music> Okay, uh, I changed my uh, mouse cursor back to the green highlight. I lost that last time. Once again, forgot to put them back. Okay, so what did I do here? Um, I created two global variables, start step and step duration. Uh, start step will, uh, I will put the time, the exact time in milliseconds uh, of the beginning of each loop and step duration is the the duration of the loop well not the loop but the duration duration of one step of the snake from one cell to the next it will last 100 millisecond so basically the snake will move at the speed of 10 cells per second each cell will take 100 milliseconds to move to, okay? Uh, so two global variables. 
here I have another local variable current time and so three variables current time equals elapsed milliseconds this procedure this function here returns the number of milliseconds that have elapsed since a specific time in the past okay so I think the time is January 1st 1970 or something like that and you get the number of milliseconds from this time um, so that gives me the current time in millisecond then what I want to do is I want to move the snake only if we have reached 100 milliseconds so I assume that each loop of my repeat each time I come in will take less than 100 milliseconds so I need to go over several times to get more than 100 milliseconds so each loop each iteration I'm checking if the current time minus the start of the step the start of the previous step so the current time is now the start of the step is before so it's first initialized at zero but you'll see later that uh, we actually initialize it back to current time but okay current time minus start step if it's over step duration meaning if the time passed since the last beginning of the step is more than the step duration the 100 milliseconds so what, what I do first is first I reinitialize my start step so my new step will start now then I can move my snake after that I can clear my screen and display my snake and that's it the snake is going to move at the speed of 100 milliseconds so 10 cells per second let's try that look at that very nice I cannot measure you know its speed but looks fine to me we can try to change this step duration if I want to double the speed I need to divide by half the step duration each step will last half the time let's try with 50 yes it moves faster okay so let's go back to 100 